This has to do with freedom. You know, you Americans, you Americans invented freedom. You invented freedom. And you know, you're on your way to losing it. Isn't that something? Our great friend Peter Schramm has passed away. Here's a few more minutes of our conversation from two years ago where he talks about what it means to be an American, how we need to get it back, what his philosophy of education is, and why ultimately he's an optimist. We're going to miss Peter. Please watch. I had a conversation the other day with a guy who was anti-illegal immigration, which is not an unreasonable position, of course, who would be in favor of illegal immigration. On the other hand, he was he was uh, decanting on immigrants not knowing anything, and they come over here and they don't know, you know, and I said, wait a minute, you know, wait a minute. I said, I'd rather be governed by any immigrant in the country than by a native. He said, what do you mean by that? I said, you people, you natives, meaning, <laughs> you know, you don't know what you're doing. You think that you have a right to be a citizen because you were born on American soil and I'm supposed to click my heels and saloon? I took an oath to preserve this constitution and this way of life. And I know something about it. You know, and I and also, you know, I, I over I overthrew all allegiances that I may have had to foreign princes and potentates. Some of you natives have allegiances to foreign princes and potentates. You know. My point is uh, to him was that immigrants the vast majority of them come here for the, or want to come here for the right reason, even if they do it illegally. In other words, some manifestation of freedom. You know, they, they want to be able to mind their own business. They want to be able to, as it were, keep the fruits of, they want to work like dogs. You know, you talk to a Mexican immigrant, you know, they work like dogs, almost without exception, because they're able to keep the fruits of their labor. <laughs> and they can send it home to their family and take care of them and so forth. Is that a vile thing? Of course not. Um, you know, my father, you know, famously said, famous to me, uh, when, when I was 10 years old in the middle of the Hungarian Revolution in 56, and he announced that we're, we're leaving and uh, we're going to, to the United States. I said, where are we going? He said, we're going to the United States. And I said, why are we going there? And he said, because we were born Americans, but in the wrong place. And what he meant by that is that, you know, and later he refined it in his own ordinary good way, which is that here human beings can be more human than any place on the face of the earth. And what that meant was not, again, a lowering, but a rising to a level of equality. Again, to use... education, by the way? I mean, he had none. Yeah. Well, he went through a, 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 you know, a Hungarian gymnasium, and that was that, which, you know, that was in the 19... Uh, uh, late 30s and 40s, so it was, of course, no, excuse me, not late 30s, yeah, mid 30s. Uh, so it was, it was, you know, com comparable to college education, you could argue, but he really had no education. But everybody knew about America and what it stood for. I'm not just saying that. That's still true, of course, even though there are misconceptions today. America still stands for freedom. That's what it stands for. You know, one of the things that, I mean, this immigration stuff, it just occurs to me to say this, that uh, the illegal immigration issues are coming up, policy issues and all that sort of stuff, of course. One of the things that I'm shocked by is that the Republicans are incapable of taking this issue and making a much bigger moral political point out of it having to do with what an American is and what citizen education should be like. I don't mean that in some weird ideological way. I mean that in the Jeffersonian, Lincolnian way. You know, let's talk about this stuff a little bit. Let's talk about self-government and what is civil and religious liberty and why are foreign princes and potentates in an alliance with them is a bad thing and so forth and what's the difference between a subject and a citizen so that we remind our our future fellow citizens, whether they come from Mexico or Hungary, of, you know, what it is that we have in common. The Republicans ought to be able to do this. I mean, this is, this is a huge point that everybody in, 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 in our history has known this. I mean, it was that G.K. Chesterton formulation uh, that, of course, is, is imperfect, but it's very interesting. He said, America is the only country in the history of the human race that has a soul of a church, you know. Uh, the, the America is an idea. It's it's not it's not blood and race and so forth. And it doesn't matter if your name is Shram or Smith or Gonzalez. You know you're equally American. Yeah. 
It's, it's, that's the most impressive thing. That's American exceptionalism. You know, what is that? That's what it is, you know. The proof that human, the, the proof, the continual proof and reproof that human beings can govern themselves. That they're not angels. They're just good enough to govern themselves. That's American exceptionalism, and that's the Novus Ordo Seclorum. That's, that's, that's proving that, uh, you know, first paragraph of Federalist 1, trying to prove that good government can be based on reflection and choice rather than accident and force. And you're the guys doing it, you Americans. You're doing it. Bless you. That's what you'll be remembered for. Not for going to the moon. Not for building buildings. We all do it badly, but we still do it. You're still at it. The point is, you're still at it. And of course, I condemn you for screwing it all up, but I also applaud you for fixing it. You're completely self-conscious. You, you, you know, you, you beat up yourself for this. No other nation in the history of the human race beats up on itself the way you do. It's weird. It's this kind of instinct or self-flagellation or something, like your Shiites or something like that, you know? But on the other hand, you know, you deserve to be beaten up by your own self. Who's going to beat you up? The Chinese or the Russians or something? Please, you know, we're talking about accident and force with those poor bastards. Yeah. Human nature. This is why I'm an optimist. Seriously. If you just put things in front of human beings a certain way, they rise. They don't lower themselves. They rise to it. That's, come on, that's everything. So it's the question is, you, everybody blames the youth or not. No, 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 it's not the youth's fault. It's us. We don't put things in front of them the right way. It's our fault when they, 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 they go down instead of go up. We think, you know, high school, every student that, I'm not kidding, 99 out of 100 students that sits in front of me for an interview, I, I'll, they all have an hour and a half interview with me with parents in the room. Every one of them says, that, that means 99 out of 100, says that they dislike high school because they've been treated like 12-year-olds for the last five years. I mean, really? You know, this isn't rocket science. If you treat people like 12-year-olds, they're going to start acting like 12-year-olds. And the human soul being what it is, many of them, maybe the vast majority of them, get tired of that. They say, give me something more. So what we say here is we give you more. This is serious. This is, this is real schooling, is the way I put it to them. The word school, of course, as you know, means leisure, scole. That's all it means. So this is real leisure. You, will, you don't have to do this. You know, this is not K through 12. That didn't seem like leisure to you because, you know, nine months out of the year you had to be there. The reason it's nine months, by the way, it really was leisure at one time because the other three months you were supposed to be in the fields, you know, <laughs> bringing home the bacon, metaphorically, so that your grandmother, who no longer was capable of moving, could still eat. But you're not needed for that anymore, civilization being what it is, so you have this opportunity to really be at leisure for probably the last time in your life to be introduced to, you know, good, true, beautiful things, and, you know, if you don't take it, go away. I don't want to have anything to do with you.